There's now just a handful of players left in the party boat for World Tour Masters. These men are the very best in the world in pursuit of one of the sports biggest prizes. They're now just three matches away from glory, starting with the quarterfinals. In our last show, China's Liu Hai Tao dominated the early exchanges, racing into a 6-2 lead, only for Neil Spion to display tenacity and close the gap to only 7-6. Tension was mounting, but Liu grabbed his chance Played the first semi final place, Shears Masters. Lou's next opponent will come from our next match between defending champion Shane Van Boning and Walid Majid. In the bottom half of the draw, England's Darren Appleton takes on American Johnny Archer, and finally, Ralph Suke plays Mark Gray. Time then for quarter final number two Majid against Van Boning. I'm feeling a lot more confidence than my first round. Um, I feel a little bit less pressure, hopefully. Uh, my opponent next match is uh, Waleed from Guitar. Um, i known him for a couple years. He's a good player, a good nine ball player. Uh, he runs out very well. Uh, I just need to be more cautious, not to make any more mistakes. I am very happy to win first match because this second year for me and first year I lose first round. I am very happy to play with Shane in the quarter final. He's champion for last year World Pool Master. I'm very excited to play with him and I will try to didn't give him any chance and I will try to play more great than before. Waleed Majid. Waleed Majid's great. Winning the lag. How important is the lag if you can get a few on the board early and put the heat on your opponent? You might just be finding yourself in the winner's circle. Well, that follows the pattern from the first quarterfinal. A lot of dry breaks in that one, and this match starts in exactly the same fashion. Against John Mora, Shane Van Boning, not his best outing, not an ideal start. However, he managed to pull through in that match, and uh, he's still on course to defend his title. Interesting factotum, however, in the 22-year history of this elite steamed event, the Whirlpool Masters, no player has ever, ever repeated. Nice safety there from Shane. I just find that incredible. You'd have to figure somewhere along the way somebody would dominate this tournament, but no, nobody has ever repeated. The cue ball catching the bump of the middle pocket, was that beneficial? You have to say yes. I think the reason we've never had successive champions in this event is purely and simply down to the fact that the standard of the tournament is so good. It underlines the quality from first round to final. Never, ever an easy match. Time extension. Shane Van Boning can see this one ball. This is a very difficult cut shot. He's queuing off the rail. Has to hit the top of the ball. And he has to find position to the blue, too. Oh, that's a great shot. Good start for SVB. We often see players, even those who go on to win the tournament, struggle at the beginning in the first round because it's very difficult out here. The conditions on the TV table are not exactly the same as the practice tables. They're the same diamond tables, but not the same. And it's the whole atmosphere and just getting comfortable in this kind of 
arena with the bright lights and the cameras all around you and the fans. We'll say this about Shane Van Boning, though. He loves this format. He is a winner breaks player. He loves to string racks together and get in that rhythm and put his opponent in the chair. He's not a fan of tournaments where they play alternate break, which is a lot of the big tournaments like the World Championships. They always play alternate break and the China Open. This tournament, however, winner breaks and short races. This is ideal for him. And it's the pure form of the game, the traditional form of the yeah, game. And I'm all for tradition. I think I can speak for a lot of pool fans out there around the world, and they say they came to love professional pool through the winter breaks format. It's it's always the most exciting format. In snooker, every event is an alternate break format, but that doesn't really make much difference because the the break off is of little consequence. Yeah, in pool, it, it can be massive. Yeah, it's massive. And uh, boy, this is an ideal start for Shane. As run outs go, that was very impressive at any stage of any match. In the first rack of the quarterfinal in the World Pool Masters, that was hugely impressive. Shane Van Boning go on, Walid Majid, nil. You could not ask for a better opening to a big match like this. He got that position on the one by leaving a good safety on Walid, who just had to basically hit and pray. Shane with some excellent potting there and a 1 0 lead. Well, that looks really good. Shane, that has to be the. The softest, I, wouldn't, I don't like to use the word soft, it was more of a medium break. But that was the most delicate break we've seen of any player. He must have been practicing that in the back room where the, the other two uh, diamonds are, the practice tables. Look at that. This, this spells trouble for Walid Majid. One, five, eight into pockets. More importantly, a very easy starter on the two. And now clearly a 3-7 combination coming up. Three balls down, cue ball right in the center of the table, a nice spread on the remaining balls. Perfection. Textbook. Time extension. There's Mark Gray looking on. He's involved in our last quarterfinal against Ralph Suke. Nice touch there. Always difficult in those combinations to maintain position on the object ball, which is going to be his next shot, the three ball. Well, this is encouraging for Van Boning, ominous for Majid. This nine ball for a 2-0 lead. And more than that, Phil, that's a statement. Coming out of the blocks and playing perfect nine ball.
back in the second quarter final in this year's Masters. It's Shane Van Boning against Wally Nguyen. The defending champion took the opening two racks and added the third in the blink of an eye with a break and run out. But in the fourth, he broke dry, which saw a rare visit from Majid. Safety play ensued, with openings falling to both men. Van Boning's miss on the two eventually presented an opportunity to Majid, who took it to pull a rack back. This is now the fifth. Oh, the cue ball got kicked. Half spell. He cannot legislate for that. That's not his fault. That's very unlucky. Now that was interesting. Cue ball scratched. And into the same pocket, the three went so deep into the jaws. Look at this. That when he took the, the white out of the pocket, Brendan Moore had to be really careful. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So now that three will be the first ball deposited. Shane's lining up a 1-3 combination. I think he might get this. <laughs> Want to bet? I'll take 6-4. to four. Still, there's a bunch of balls down there. Shane's got to be delicate with the position, and now... He has to bring it back out for the two. <coughs> Lying in wait for the winner of this match is China's Liu Haitao who's defeated Niels Fine and Carl Boyce so far. I think everybody's been impressed with the standard of play of Lu Hai Tao. So many potential winners still in line for this title and a first prize of 20,000 US dollars. But determined not to relinquish the title is the man at the table right now. So easy. Just not quite settled, even though it's an elementary ball. The scratch on the break did for Walid Majid in rap number five. Shane Van Boning is halfway to victory. Ted said that Shane Van Boning made that look easy. And the reason for that was, for him, it was easy. Unlucky for Majid. Players try to control that cue ball, and uh, sometimes, you know, with all these balls flying around, the cue ball Two will right get six. kicked, and that's exactly Shame what happened. To break. Hitting four racks to one. So after a series of errors in the previous rack, Van Boning comes back and clears the colors with perfection. Well, again, he comes up empty on the break shot. So after starting out great on the break, he is uh, two in a row now with nothing down. The overall break pattern of this tournament has been no pattern. So difficult to, to work out what's going to happen next. You think a player has solved it, and then all of a sudden... The magic eludes them. One of the reasons for that, and we often mention this, is that wooden rack, there's, there is really no such thing as an exact pattern that you can replicate every time. With the templates that you see, some, see sometimes in tournaments and the plastic thing they put on the table, 
you'll get the same rack every single time. But with the wooden rack, when it's done by hand by the referees, every rack is slightly different. And got unlucky there, Phil. He had it. That was a great shot. I mean, to bring the cue ball all the way around for position on the blue two and just got covered by the orange five. And the escape on the two is no gimme. He should do it. I think he's got room off the top cushion. But of course, it's where the blue two ball goes. Time extension. It's a 30 second shot clock in operation. One 30 second extension allowed per rack per player and it's taken here understandably he might run into the nine well he was hit in hope at that pace in terms of maybe getting the nine close to a pocket it's in hope in terms of getting it safe and on the second count he's been successful inadvertently By landing on the rail, he's taken out any hope of a jump. Although, no, he is going to jump. Arm extension. <coughs> In going wow. over to get his jump cue, Teddy took up a few extra seconds, so has to take the extension on this shot. And with the degree of difficulty of it, I'm not surprised. Well, he really has to dig into this. That ball's right on the rail. He almost made that. But that is open. There is an alleyway there for Walid. He needs to make something happen. This can get out of hand in a hurry. Well, I thought he was going to flick off the three and very luckily get in behind the five ball. Van Boning can get through. I don't think that Waleed's safety game is up to the level of Shane Van Boning. That's a great shot. He seemed a little concerned as to whether the cue ball was going to travel far enough to be able to see the three past the seven, but it has. Another thin cut. Or even the bank. And now, Phil, clear sailing. Really not the best safeties from Walid, and that's why he's about to go down five to one. He's from the northern USA state of South Dakota. Not famous for producing a great amount of very well-known athletes, is it? The Dakotas in general. A former holder of the home run record for a single season, Roger Maris. He was from the Dakotas, but Shane Van Boning and his folks back home, they're all very proud. That's for sure. Shane has a uh, pedigree, really, in, in pool. His grandparents were professionals. His parents were professionals. So from the time he can remember two years old he said he was playing pool oh no that is a huge miss well the back arm came over that was reminiscent actually of the nine ball that Johnny Archer missed to the opposite middle pocket in his first round match yesterday not sure if the cue ball skidded when he when he hit it 
Wow, that was clear sailing. And now, well, what a difference. This could be 4-2. I mean, 5-1 is, is a route. 4-2 and you're breaking. You're right in the match. Don't think it was a skid. In snooker, if you have a kick, it never kicks thin. And he overcut the, the seven ball. What a bonus for Majid. Big time turnaround for Walid Majid. Seen much great two play seven. by Walid Majid. Majid to break so perhaps two racks to four. he can take that gift and uh, turn it into a little run of his own. How does that seven ball stay up? Yes, I think Sir Isaac Newton would be in here conducting experiments on that seven. <laughs> it defies one of his laws. Luckily, the eight went in at the last gasp, and he does have a shot on the one, but the seven right on the precipice. Oh, and that's poor, isn't it? That is poor. Very timid on that. He's going to have to uh, go back to that side pocket now for the two ball. Nice cut on the one. He gets this. The rack will be wide open. That was a lot better. Phil, um, you know, while Leeds safety game is not up to championship standard at this point, that was another poor effort. Very delicate. That four seven combination, leaving the four on. Nice angle to do what he wants to to get onto the five. And the mini crisis caused by missing the seven in the previous rack looks like being only that a momentary blip. Knowing his quest for perfection, Shane Van Boning, and his pride of performance. Missing the seven will be a source of frustration, but the way the match is, most certainly won't be. Well, he's good value for this lead. There's an argument to say the way he's played. The advantage could be even more, as it is. Shane Van Boning leads Walid Majid, 5-2. One of those things in pool, we, we've seen it a lot, most glaringly with uh, Carl Boys missing that one foot eight ball as he was about to defeat Lou Hightow. You've got to concentrate right to the very end, to the last nine balls. I think in uh, Shane, the previous rack sort of figuratively took his eye off the ball. Wasn't quite paying attention because it seemed like an elementary run out. He's also up against an opponent right now who is really not in the match. Look out for that cue ball. That's a scratch. 
Not his fault. Very unlucky. Well, he got kicked. But the break for both players becoming more and more mystifying. That's just unlucky. Certainly the in-off was, but even so, it was a dry break. Have liked better position than that. He's just making life difficult for himself at every turn. Time extension. Pool is a confrontational sport you're against an opponent. In this case, one of the very best in the business. And maybe there's an intimidation factor going on with Majid. Just barely. Nice shot. Nice recovery. This will lead. Can play. Uh, he is uh, the best player in the Middle East right now. He recently won the Middle East Championship. It was a nine ball event against the best players in that region. And that is a, a growing region as far as pool is concerned. And there's a lot of great players there. Positionally living dangerously. He is. He's, he's just not in stroke and will doesn't just play in the Middle East he, he travels the world and plays in all the big tournaments and I've seen him in pressure situations and coming through against the best in pool he's got to just settle down Good camera shot there right down the line of that loose back arm of Majid's. Well, he gets this nine ball. He's only two behind. He's going to be breaking. This is a funny old game, isn't it, Phil? <laughs> He's not played well at all and still in it. You're right, Ted. It feels like a rout. It feels like a runaway. But then you look at the scoreboard and it isn't. Majid definitely has restored hope. He's only two adrift. Scratching off the break is never recommended for anyone. Shane Van Boning disgusted. A couple of times where it looked as though Majid might surrender position. He didn't, though. And in the end, he ran out. Overall, Shane Van Boning has played better. He's executed better shots. But when you look at the uh, score sheet, he had two fouls in rack number four. He had glaring miss nine. on the seven in rack number All six. To break, trailing three racks to five. And scratch on the break in rack number eight. Although we will say that wasn't his fault. That was just unlucky. Nothing down. Well, the leading player from a rather dry country, Qatar, in the desert, has had another dry break of a, a different kind. Fortunately for Walid, he doesn't leave anything for Shane. In the last couple of Push matches we've court. seen, the two quarterfinals so far, Ted, the breaks have gone from being dry to being positively arid. <laughs> Cl 
Classic push out there. He's going to leave the one open, but there's no shot at the pocket. So he's going to tempt Walid. So trying to find out if Walid can uh, see a good safety here. Well, Walid has the option to hand it back. He's going to shoot it, though. Very poor effort. That is wide open. That is a bad shot. Well, a carbon copy of Rack 7 when he played a terrible safety on the one and left it to the same pocket. Nobody can tell Walid Majid he didn't have any chances. He's had a lot of chances to get on track here, but he's blown it at every turn. Yes, and you hit the nail on the head, Ted. Tactically inferior. Such an important part of nine ball, the safeties. When a lot of players start playing, of course, everybody loves the offense. They love the bang balls and pot balls, but it's the safeties that win you championships. Just ask Niels Fyan about that. When he added that safety play to his game. I mean, he always, you know, could play safeties, but he wasn't that well known for it. And Niels added that to his uh, arsenal, studying safeties, practicing for a year and a half, and he finally won the big one, the World Nine Ball Championship in 2014. That's the aspect of your game that takes you into the winner's circle. How about the, the great Efren Reyes? And his, he's legendary for his ability to play safe. Van Burning missed the seven ball to the side in rack six. No such mistake there. This nine ball, that's just punishing Walid Majid for that poor safety on the one. Shane Van Boning now two away from a spot in the semifinals. He leads Walid Majid six to three. Rack 10, Shane Van Boning to break, leading six racks to three. Welcome back to the Victoria Warehouse, where one thing is in store, pool drama. Wait, the, the break has just deserted him. Let me read you a quote from Johnny Archer after winning his match against James Jordiardis yesterday in the in the first round. He said, I'll have to work on my break a little bit, so I will speak to Shane Van Boning, who I've been listening to at the practice table, because he's mastered the break. Might have to change his opinion. I really don't see how he can master the break when, you know, in, in the practice room, they're not racking them with a wooden rack. They're just, you know, just to make it quick, they're racking them on a template in the practice room. But here, they're racking them in a wooden triangle and it's a totally different scenario. Just when you think Majid's 
tournament is on life support, he finds a way of getting back into the match. Although this 3-7 combination is by no means certain. Distance between the balls. Well done. with a high number of dry breaks in this match in particular. There's the likes of Mark Gray and James, Jordi Otis, watch on. With a high number of dry breaks, it's incredible to think that in our very first match of the tournament, Shane Van Boning against John Mora, there wasn't a single dry break. 14 yeah. racks. It is amazing. And there you see John Mora. Went down eight to six to Shane Van Boning in the very first match here at the Masters. So a, a good rack here for Walid Majid. A chance to let the arm out a bit. And who knows? He can still come back. Hey, that makes the score six to four. Walid Majid hanging around. He trails Shane Van Boning by two. At the start of the match, when Van Boning took a 3-0 lead, we were talking about pool perfection. Now with Majid, we're talking about pool perseverance, and maybe perseverance will pay off. So, Walid Majid has yet to have a break and run out in this match. Rocky 11, Walid Majid to break, trailing four racks to six. Can he do it here? The nine ball. Yes, he can. Doesn't even have to run it out. The nine ball went in. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. He wins the rack. He's not even sure if he wins. <laughs> Referee Brendan Moore says, yeah, you're in. And now look at the score, Phil. Six to five. And he's up breaking again. Let's look and see how it happened. Here we see it. It's going to be kicked by the eight ball. There you see it right there. The right nine club. in the corner. That's an instant break. winner. By five racks to six. And there for all to see the inconsistency of the break from a golden to a dry. Well, fortunately for Walid, he hasn't left a shot on the one ball. Two golden breaks in the tournament so far, Ted. And we had to wait for the semi finals last year for our first golden break and the man at the table now was responsible for it on the way to beating Chris Melling. How is this match 6-5? Please I, tell me. I was just thinking the same thing. I mean, if you go back and listen to our commentary and review what we've been saying. Walid hasn't played anywhere near the level that Shane Van Boning has, and yet here he is down one in a safety battle. It's pretty much an even match right now. Stroke. 
Wow. I'm surprised he missed that. Playing tactically on the one ball has been the bane of his life in this match. He lost the seventh rack as a result of a poor safety on the one. He lost the ninth in exactly the same circumstances. Is he going to lose the twelfth after missing the one ball altogether and giving Van Boning ball in hand? Time extension. Again, his uh, safety play has been substandard. Well, he, he should have at least hit the one. That's surprising. The obvious head scratcher here for Van Boning is the position of the three directly in behind the nine. But the way he's played that tells us it will pot. Pot there from SVB. If he can go on to win this match, I, I think that Shane will be the first to admit not his best effort. Started out playing as good as you ever want to see Shane Van Boning play, but since then, few errors, bit of a bit of bad luck. Another crunch, seven to the side pocket. No issue this time. Isn't it amazing how pool gives you tests that you've previously failed? Under pressure, though, he's done well here. Yeah, you're right, Felon. There is a lot of pressure on him. As he had this match in control, he let it get away from him, but now Shane Van Boning won away from a spot in the semifinals. He leads Walid Majid 7-5. And if Majid loses this match, the one thing you will think about is tactical play right at the start of Rax and messing up on the one ball. It's cost him three directly. I think in his dreams tonight, there's going to be a big fat one ball <laughs> that won't go away. Well, there's a good break. Three balls down already. Well, the object ball is the red three now. He can bank this. The four coming down right at the end there and just flicking the one, or fl flicking the cue ball, I should say. That made things slightly more difficult. What a big shot coming up. This could be the clincher, you know. Well, he tried to think, wow. That's a winner. A fantastic fluke at just the right time. 3-9 combination. Didn't play it, but he'll certainly accept it. Shane Van Boning, defending champion, beats Walid Majid 8-5, and he's into the semi-finals fortuitously. Well, I got a lot of fortunate roles, so uh, I started feeling more comfortable. 
Yeah, after the first game, when I won the first game, um, I, I just didn't feel any pressure. So I just tried to go up there like I was practicing earlier. So uh, it worked out pretty well. Shane Van Boning remains on course to defend his title and now faces Lu Hai Tao in the semi finals. Next time out, the attention switches to the bottom half of the draw as Darren Appleton prepares to take on Johnny Archer and Mark Gray faces Ralph Suke. Those two quarterfinals will complete our semi final lineup in the Party Poker World.